All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, welcome to the presentation and webinar today on how to easily create engaging training content with Haiku Deck and MindFlash. Uh, you'll have two presenters today, uh, Catherine Carr from Haiku Deck and me, Randir Vieira from MindFlash. Uh, just judging by the number of people who've registered and shown up already, this is definitely a very popular topic. So we are looking forward to getting your uh, responses. And uh, we have a couple of interactive polls. So uh, stay tuned in, and we look forward to your responses. Uh, here's the outline that we'll cover today. We have a couple of housekeeping items that we'll go through. Uh, we have uh, Catherine presenting an overview of Haiku Deck and a demo, a live demo, of how you would go about creating uh, a Haiku Deck. And then we'll import that content as a PowerPoint into MindFlash, uh, create some quizzes, and deploy that. And we have a link with uh, all these resources at the end as well. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, get into it. So a couple of housekeeping items. This webinar will be recorded. You will get a link within a day to this and all previous webinars. So uh, you don't have to take too many notes. If you have any questions along the way, please type them into the box. We have Gary here, who is our moderator, and will uh, give us the questions and direct them to Catherine or me. So as you have questions, feel free to type them into the box. They are being monitored all the time. We'll have a link to all the tools and resources that we talk about in the presentation at the end. So examples of them are linked to Hypodex website, uh, links to past webinars, and including this web where this webinar will be posted, a link to the MindFlash course that incorporates this presentation and quizzes, etc. So uh, stay tuned for all those tools and resources at the end. And we have a lot of material to go through, but we are keeping some time for questions as well. All right, so a quick overview of MindFlash for those of you who aren't familiar. Uh, MindFlash is an online e-learning company, so it's a completely web-based product. There is no download, and it's used for self-paced learning, so for people who want to take the training on their own time, on their own device, and at their own pace. It is actively used by over 1,000 companies to train people around the world. Uh, we've had millions of uh, course completions and hundreds of thousands of people take training on MindFlash uh, every month. Uh, the most loved feature is the ease of use for both trainers and trainees. We have the majority of our trainers create their first course in MindFlash on the first day of starting their trial with MindFlash. So it's that easy to get uh, up and running. And we have about a 93% completion rate for uh, users who start taking their training on MindFlash. So very easy for them to start and, more importantly, complete the training. So it's used to train employees, partners, and customers. And here's just a small sample of those uh, 1,000 people who use MindFlash. And uh, we hope to have you guys as MindFlash customers if you aren't already on the list. So what makes content engaging? And uh, obviously, engaging content is a critical part to, uh, for people to remember what training was covered and therefore to adopt and implement it. So we've had webinars on this subject before. Uh, and those will all be listed on the resources slide. But the key points that we have are use different media types, especially for e-learning. When you mix things up, it definitely keeps it more engaging and people absorb more. So examples of different media types include uh, text, voice, video, uh, photos, etc. Keep the number of words down to as few as possible so that it's not uh, dense content. And make the content visually appealing. So we know all of these things, and you know this isn't rocket science. This is fairly common sense. So why don't we do these more often? And very often, uh, doing, creating content that incorporates uh, visuals and uh, different media types, etc., is time and effort intensive. And we have 10 million other things that we need to be doing. So we don't have that kind of time or effort to invest in making engaging content. So we often resort to death by bullet point, because that's the only thing that we can do in the time that's available. But we're thrilled to have um, Catherine and Haiku Deck here to show us 
how we can get some of these different media types and visually appealing content in about the same amount of time as it would take to create PowerPoint. So over to you, uh, Catherine, to show us how we're going to do this. Great. Thanks for having me. Um, this, is, this is such a, an important topic. I think a lot of people feel the pain of um, trying to create good visuals. They maybe know what their visuals should look like. And um, all, the, all the slides that you've seen so far have been created using Haiku Deck. And just a little note of background on that, Haiku Deck is a free app. Um, it's available on iPad as well as you can use it in a web browser. And um, we launched a couple years ago, and I will, I'm going to explain some of the principles behind Haiku Deck, and I'm also going to show you how easy it is to make one. So um, my, my name is Catherine Carr, as Ron here said. Um, I'm the Chief Inspiration Officer at Haiku Deck. I've been working with the team since they launched two years ago, and if you want to tweet uh, along during the webinar or later, my handle is Mama Tweeta. Love to hear from you. Just love to hear what resonates with people. So, um, okay. So, can we go to the next? I think I can. Um, there we go. So, yeah. let let me just touch a little bit on the why we are here. Um, I'm just getting the. Okay. Can I? All right. Oh, I see. Now, I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks for thanks for being patient there. I'm just getting in the handle of where my controls are. So um, we really, as I said, we're a small team, and we share a belief that presentations should really be kind of awesome. I mean, you're usually you're launching a new product you're really proud of, or you're sharing an idea, or expressing something that you've worked really hard on, and they should be they should be great. It should be really like the highlight of our day, but um, too often, they're really not. They're the, they're sort of, hey, Ron, here I'm not. Uh, I can't seem to be able to. Oh, here we go. I can't seem to advance the slides. Maybe I can just make a little. Uh, let's yeah, let's go to the next slide. Here. Okay, great. Let's go to the next one. You you know, more often it feels like this, and I am sure each of you has experienced the sinking feeling when you know you're sitting in a room and the presenter starts talking and they. They put up their slides and it's just the header and the bullets and you can't really see from the back row and it, it just feels like time is kind of standing still in the bad way, not in the captivating way. And um, you know, the inventors of the app, they both worked at Microsoft and they, in fact, they'd worked on the Office product and they were trying to make a presentation to their investors on a very different business idea and just really struggling with creating decent looking slides and they're like, why is this so hard? You know, why why hasn't this been addressed? We've been using the same tools in the same way for twenty years and we want to just do something about it. So that's kind of the inspiration for the company. Okay, we can go ahead to the next one. Um, and I also want to explain why why it's important. So there's this guy, Dave Parody is his name, and he does every two years this um, annoying PowerPoint survey, and he surveys hundreds of people who um, listen, who attend conferences and meetings to kind of keep his finger on the pulse of what's going on, and it's pretty amazing. His findings were, you know, more than a quarter of us see at least one PowerPoint a day, and I'm using that in a generic sense, a presentation every day, and 50% said more than half of the ones that they see are annoying. Um, so let's go to the next. Hey, Catherine, do we, should we just pause yeah. here to see how many people actually use uh, PowerPoint? Great idea. Yeah. So there's yeah. a poll that's yeah, running on your screen. What tools, yeah, what tools you're using. So, um, you know, PowerPoint is certainly, I, ex I expect this to come in first, but there's some other interesting tools that people use. Um, people with a strong design sense or Mac fans like to use Keynote. Prezi has gotten a lot of interest for being a more dynamic platform. I'd definitely love to know if people are using that. And I don't expect a lot of you to be using Haiku Deck right now. I hope that at the end of this hour, you might at least be inspired to try it. And I can see, yeah, it looks like almost everybody is using PowerPoint, which doesn't surprise me. That's a, you know, it's a very, it's the standard. Certainly, it has a lot of great features. Um, okay, great. 
So. Yeah, so there you can. Ninety-six percent. Wow. Okay, so no Prezi users. That's interesting. Um, Keynote and other. I would I would be curious what the others are. But great. Okay, so let's. Um, I wanted to show you the kind of the words that people express. So in the comments in this annoying PowerPoint survey. Um, people, he, he sort of did an analysis to see which words appear most frequently. And it probably won't surprise you because we've all experienced these feelings when, you know, we talk about death by PowerPoint. The, it's boring, it's too long, there's too much or many of things. And one thing that's incredibly annoying to people is when presenters just read the text off their slides. And I know this is a little bit of a different different than the scenario that you're building to, which is self-paced. But um, still, people don't want to have to read a lot of text off their slides. So can we go on to the next? Um, I did mention it. But people do bring up this idea of death by PowerPoint. It's become kind of a cultural cliche, almost, just that feeling, the sinking feeling of, of uh, oh, here we go again. OK, so let's keep going. Um, the common theme in all of those words and all those complaints about the annoying PowerPoints is just this idea of information overload. And Ron here just touched on this very idea, but you know, people are just bombarded with content, right? And they have to deal with all these incoming emails and articles they have to read and training they have to take. And um, it, it's just good practice to really sort of design to that mindset. And how can you how can you help reduce that feeling? How can you sort of communicate your message in a much more elegant way? So that kind of goes on to our philosophy, which is next. Um, can we go? Oh, oh, and you know, making the point too that just really better presentations are are going to give you better results, and in your case, it's going to be better training courses. So. Um, even better completion rates or retention rates. So these really have a, an impact on your business. So I'm going to share um, a few tips that, as I said, we, we studied um, what many presentation design experts have to say, and we've tried to really build that into the product. So these are things that Haiku Deck is optimized for, but also ideas that you can apply um, with any presentation tool that you're using. So next is um, there seem to be some yeah. folks who uh, are stuck on the slide. So I'm going to just pause it and resume it again. The okay. Screen share. Okay. So great. Just... Great. Get everybody back on track. Get this back. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Really value your your right. time, taking the time to learn about this. Okay, so we're we can right. everybody see we'll the back. five quick tips. All right, good. And I also want to mention that in the spirit of keeping it short, I often do this presentation and I share ten tips, but I've condensed it down to the five that I felt like were most relevant uh, for your particular case so we can get through the, the material quickly. So we really have this philosophy of simple, beautiful, and fun, um, which I will go into. We can just keep going here. But those are the words we always come back to. And you know, keeping it simple, this is a lot of people ask why our product is named Haiku Deck. Um, you know, we really love that in a haiku there are these constraints and these rules that create something that's very poetic and lovely out of a very short, just three lines. And so that's really the fundamental idea. Um, let's go on to our first tip. 
Mm, next. Maybe I'm now stuck on the on the slide. Okay. Are you seeing it? Uh, it's still showing simple for me, but have you have we gone on? Um, yeah. So the, the one idea for a slide. Okay. So the first the first tip I really want to share with you is. Um, simplifying things to one idea per slide. And this is, this is something that is kind of a big radical change for most people who are used to creating um, presentations. So what we often do when we're putting together slides is we sort of fall into this formula of I'm going to choose a headline and then I'm going to pack in a bunch of different bullets or supporting points. And nearly any presentation expert or designer will tell you that people can really only focus on one idea at a time. You just have to um, distill your idea down, and it may sometimes mean that you have more slides, but if you go through them quickly, you'll keep your audience with you and hold their attention more effectively. So that's a great tip that I think I really had to sort of reinvent how I put presentations together when I learned about this, but um, I like it. It actually I think it helps my ideas stay more focused. So going on to the next, oh, even data, yes. So there's a lot of talk right now about big data and complex data. And um, we, we believe this is true even for, um, for data points. So instead of trying to pack in lots and lots of data on a slide, you want to focus on a particular data point. So here I'm just highlighting the, you know, the completion rate, the average completion rate of MindFlash versus other types of programs. It's amazing. Okay, let's go on to the next. Um, and then not too many words. And this has also been mentioned before. Um, and it's especially true if you're presenting live uh, because, as we already went over, your audience does not want to hear you read word for word. But I think it's definitely true for a self-paced course as well when um, you just want to pare down and simplify and that helps um, helps you make sure that you're focusing on the most important point and respects your audience's time and intelligence right if you have to spell every single thing out it just feels really boring so um, I've chosen an image of oysters here and that's because many experts will sort of recommend maybe between 6 to 12 words as a big goal to shoot for. So I like to think of words like oysters. About a half dozen is great. More than that, you might get a stomach ache. But again, of course, you have to, you have to um, make, it suit for, make it suit your needs. Make sure you're communicating the information that you need. But see what you can trim down. It's kind of like Twitter, the mindset of any of you use Twitter. You know, I often find myself editing down, 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 and it usually ends up better than the idea I started with. This might be longer. Okay, next. So the second part of our philosophy, we, we covered simple. Um, the second part is beautiful. And um, I want to be really clear here. I mean, there's having just beautiful slides without the substance is not going to be effective. but um, you can have the best idea in the world or the most detailed content, and if it's not presented in, a, in an attractive way, it can really get lost in the noise, and people will really tune out. So we believe it's really worth it to invest a little time into making your slides um, more visually appealing. And we've also worked really hard to make it very easy, so um, a lot of people may want to create slides like this and know that they should, but it's very difficult. The tools that people are used to using are really not set up to make this easy unless you are a graphic designer or you have a graphic design team. So I'll show you how easy it is. Um, the why here is that pictures are an incredibly effective way to communicate. And scientific studies show over and over again that our brain processes visual content much more quickly than any other type. Um, and images also help us with understanding, with comprehension, and retention, which are really important when you're thinking about communicating in terms of training. 
So this picture that I chose here is from a neighborhood in Seattle, which is where Haiku Deck is based. And there's this little tiny house that was owned by um, a 90-year-old woman who um, the neighborhood kind of grew up around her and they kept offering her more and more money. I think at one point they offered her $2 million to sell her house and she said no, she's staying. And so they built the, the building kind of around her little house. If any of you have seen the movie Up, this kind of inspired that story. But it's really a touchstone in Seattle. People have tattoos of this little house. And it's a great story, but when you see the picture, you, it just really, you can really just see how steadfast she was in, in keeping her, her house and her lifestyle in the midst of this modern development. It's very powerful. And, you know, I always like to think about what images can communicate the point I'm trying to make. So the, the oysters to really help you remember the concept of a half dozen. Um, you know, these things just really kind of light up our brains and help us remember the content. So let's go on. Um, the next point around the beautiful is just really keeping the formatting nice and clean and consistent. And like I said, if you're a designer, great, it's easy. But um, you know, one, one thing that happens with a lot of presentation tools that we're used to is there's so many choices. And we get a little bit sidetracked in you know, getting our bullets to zoom in or flip around or catch on fire or doing different fonts. And we try to really simplify the choices. So you might have noticed that in each slide, my text is kind of appearing in the same place on the slide down at the bottom. I have that nice text screen to make it more visible for you. And I'm just keeping things very simple. And that helps with your cognitive processing. You, you know where to look on each slide. It, it sort of helps your brain be ready to absorb the material and not have to like be distracted by all these other things competing for attention. Okay, next. And then, um, okay, a lot of people sort of think about consistency and formatting in terms of the corporate template, right? Um, and I certainly have created many, many presentations in my career using various forms of the corporate template. And it is one way of keeping your formatting consistent. Um, I just pulled sort of a generic one, you know, welcome to our company. We'd love to give you a tour with the, with, you know, the imagery. And people spend a lot of money and resources on creating these templates and making sure that people use them. So, um, you know, you may or may not have flexibility in that regard, but my advice is to just gently try to break free of it a little bit because a lot of times the templates include elements that, again, are just going to detract attention away from your actual content and your message. Um, so sometimes I might advise people to maybe use the template for the first slide, but not every single one. or you know, use images that evoke the brand colors instead of having a logo every single time because those things can get monotonous. And the last part of our philosophy is fun, which is definitely not a word that most people associate with either making presentation content or listening to it. But we really believe that it should be fun. So um, if we go on to the next one, I mean, to me, it's really about looking for the story and everything. Um, you know, we often sort of fall into the feeling that whatever we're trying to communicate has to sound a certain way or has to look a certain way. Um, but, you know, if you can just give yourself a little bit of creative latitude and think about some analogies or stories that can really help your information come alive, um, it's going to be a lot more interesting and engaging to your audience. And again, we really try to build the tool to make all this possible. So just as a recap, simple, beautiful, and fun, um, I wanted to go into Haiku Deck and actually show you how we would create a short deck um, so that you can, you can see that these types of slides, you can create them no matter what your, what your um, design experience or not. I get lots and lots of people telling me that People, they'll create a haiku deck and people come up to them and say, wow, are you a designer? And they say, no, I just, I just feel like I'm one. So I'm just loading the app here. 
Um, make sure that you guys can get a little nice full screen. Okay, hopefully everybody can see. So um, Ron here told me that a lot of times the types of training you might be creating would be to demonstrate a new product. So I'm just going to demonstrate to you a product that I happen to love, which is my Nissan Leaf. And I'm going to say it's the car of the future. So as you see, I'm just sort of typing in. I chose my, um, my text type. There are other types that we'll look at. And really here, you're just kind of writing. Think about writing a headline, right? Short and simple. I did the two lines. Um, I'm going to go into my image search, which I think is really the killer aspect of, um, of Haiku Deck. And we integrate into a library of amazing, beautiful, free Creative Commons licensed images that people have posted to the web. And we pull in all the attribution automatically. So I'm just kind of scrolling down here. I'm going to maybe try out a couple of images and see which one I like. That one looks pretty good. Um, so it's so easy to just pull in images. I used to do this a lot before I used Haiku Deck, and I would spend so much time trying to find the Creative Commons images, get, you know, track down the author's name, see what type of licenses, and we just sort of take care of all that really easily. Now, you know, a, a very traditional way or a usual way would just be to kind of go in and maybe talk about some of the great features of the, of the LEAF. So we could say that it has 100% electric power. We could say it has a 100-mile range. We could say that um, it seats five. So this is sort of a basic thing. I might choose a solid color background maybe to just make it look really nice. And um, you know you can choose different backgrounds. I could add a photo background. And as you can kind of see, we, we our philosophy is less is more. So you can only do five bullets. I'm just only going to do three. And they look the best when they're nice and short. Um, but I could also apply what I just talked about, which is the one idea per slide. And maybe we could go back to those and really say, hey, it's 100% electric power. Let's find an image. I think I want to even show an image of a leaf. So I can type in any search term that I want. Hit search. Again, have all these beautiful Creative Commons images right here at my fingertips. And I often find that just the process of looking for images will sometimes inspire me and really help me think about um, you know, the feel or the message of my thing. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of tweaking the layout to so you can really see the image well. And I could put that text in different places. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of you don't have to be a designer. We, we've sort of had a designer create these layouts for you. And you don't have endless choices, but you have enough choices to make them look really great. Um, we might talk about the 100-mile range. Um, and maybe for this particular one, I have an image in my own collection that I'd like to use. So I'm going right into my photos here on my MacBook. And I'm going to choose this one I took of my dashboard this morning, showing that I can drive 100 miles. Just uploading it here for a second. I'm going to choose my layout. And you know, I can, I can sort of adjust if I want. I could zoom around or crop it if I need to do that. And then maybe um, instead of saying it seats four, I might want to think of a more playful and engaging way to communicate that. So I could say that it holds four soccer players and backpacks. And once again, I want to use my own image to show this. I drive kids around the soccer practice all the time, so this definitely resonates with me. Um, get my image of my soccer players. So if you're trying to speak to a, a busy mom like me who's driving kids around, this really gets my attention that I can take around my, my soccer players. So I'm just building this nice little deck. Um, I might want to do a quote or a testimonial. Sometimes you do need a little bit more text. So the ones I've been showing you have had a very minimal amount of text. But I always love using customer testimonials. So I might say something like, I expected to save money on gas. What I didn't expect was that we'd 
safe. So we drive our other car left. You probably save a hundred dollars a month from driving the leaf. I'm just kind of drafting something quickly here. Um, so maybe a good image here might be um, Haiku Deck is suggesting some tags for me. I might choose money, you know, choose different images that would look nice. I kind of like that one. And then the last thing I want to do is create a, a simple graph. So I showed you an example in the presentation. Um, I can do different chart types. I could do a pie chart, which is great for showing parts to a whole or sort of a simple info infographic bar chart. And you know, you just move the things a little bit up and down. Um, let's do a stat chart, and I'll just say by the numbers. Uh, maybe I want to say how much a year I'm spending on gas. Oh, it made it very small. Don't worry. Um, uh, maybe I want to say how much I'm spending on maintenance. I think I just found a little bug in our product, but I'll talk to the guys about that. And how much I'm having on happiness, which is 100. So let me just kind of click back on here. And I get these nice, bold visuals that tell the story of this product that I am a big fan of. Um, so, you know, you can continue uh, creating different slides, but I just sort of wanted to give you the quick overview of how that works. And, um, and then when I'm done, I can share my Haiku deck. Um, there's different, I can share it on any social media, email, copy the link. I also want to mention that um, I can work right on my iPad, and I know this is really valued for people who are on the go and maybe kind of squeezing in their presentation work here and there during their commute or while they're watching TV. Um, you can work across iPad or uh, web browser according to your situation, but I really love creating it on my iPad as well. I'm just demonstrating it on the web right now. And I can also export and create a PowerPoint that, um, that could then be pulled into MindFlash to deliver the great content. Um, once I've made my PowerPoint, that's a good way to incorporate maybe a video if you want to mix up with different types of media, like we mentioned before. Haiku Deck doesn't include media yet, which is something we'd like to add, but um, you can just make a placeholder slide for it in your Haiku Deck and pull in your video um, or do, you know, maybe incorporate some other features that you really like in PowerPoint. Um, and upload it to MindFlash. So I'm going to hand it back over to our MindFlash experts to show you how you would take it from there. All right. Thanks, Catherine. And I have to say, it, it definitely took me a little while to get used to the one idea per slide, but it saved so much time with just pulling in uh, images that were relevant and beautiful and handling the attribution and things that uh, it was really great. Uh, so okay. i just like to pause here for a moment and uh, launch this poll that we talked about these five tips that uh, Catherine gave us. Which one are you most likely to implement? So if you can just take a moment and uh, click the one that you think you're most likely to implement, uh, that would help us. Ooh. Cool. Lots of good variety. I like that. Yeah. That's great. All right. About yeah, and I 70. think my advice is to try a little bit at a time. And some of these do take practice. And, and you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of trying and getting the feel for it. But I personally, I will never go back <laughs> to the old way of doing it. That's great. A lot of people want to try using visuals. I think that's great. Um, one idea per slide, that's a, that's a really handy tip that um, – I think most people who create presentation and training material could benefit from. Uh, great. I'm glad to see that people are going to try a range of things. Fantastic. All right. So, who's the next one? Okay, so I'm going to just uh, present 
here and just show you once we get the output from um, from the Haiku deck as a PowerPoint, what we can do with it in MindFlash. Great. Two powerful tools that work together. <laughs> when we when I first talked to the team, he told me that many people are interested in using MindFlash, but they're like, oh, we have to have the content already. So um, this is this is kind of a nice way of creating some pretty great looking content that looks like it takes a lot longer than it does. Okay. All right. Just a moment here while we switch. Okay, just a moment here. It seems to have got stuck. Got it. You know, uh, Catherine. The next time we should uh, we should get just like uh, Haiku Deck did the reinvented PowerPoint. We should reinvent <laughs> webinars. That would be really cool. I'd love to love to do something like that. <laughs> Very powerful. Sometimes some little little tricky moments. So we had the results. Great. All right. All right. Sorry about that. So uh, this isn't a full-on demo of MindFlash. This is just to pick it up from where we left off with Catherine. So I'm in my MindFlash account. And for those of you who want to get a full demo of MindFlash, there's a link in the resources section to uh, both starting your own free trial as well as attending our weekly demo. So what I've done here is just create a course and I imported the content that Catherine presented. So you can see the 25 slides here and it's as simple as um, picking a file from your desktop. So I already imported this file and you can see it here and I can view the slides here I can decide to hide certain slides, which I've done here. I can very easily add audio here to give that voiceover effect, or I could do it in PowerPoint itself. But that, that makes it really easy to add your voice and some multimedia to these awesome images and slides. And then I created a final quiz at the end of the, the slides as well here. So you can see all these uh, slides over here and there's the quiz that I created so um, I'm going to make this link available to you as well in the resources section but here's just a quick preview of what your trainees would see and uh, this is something that would work seamlessly on both uh, web and mobile and tablet devices so they could pause uh, on one device and resume on the other so this is the same familiar content that you saw Catherine present, and I'm just going to breeze through it because we already looked at it, but this is just to give you a sense of what the user would see when they're taking the course. And they could go back and forth here, and we have uh, a small quiz at the end that talks about, uh, evaluates how much of this material they actually absorbed. So they would be able to, to take that and to then give you feedback on um, how much they absorbed as well as any suggestions they may have on how you can make this training even better. Okay, so there's the example and then you get incorrect, you can set the number of tries and at the end of this you can set the you can set the certificate so this person could get their certificate at the end of the course. So this is a multiple <laughs> type Check long. <laughs> well, I listened to something. 
Okay, so right. this is a preview that we're taking here, but you get an idea of what it would be like. So here you've gone from creating, and there's the certificate that you can uh, create. This is just using the standard uh, templates that we had, but if I wanted, I could customize this. So we've gone from uh, taking just a few minutes to create some engaging content, use a lot of the principles that we know about, but usually take lots of time and effort to create that visually engaging content, but to create it very quickly, import it into MindFlash, and uh, able to add even more uh, engaging methods and multimedia to it by adding voice, uh, adding video or YouTube's, et cetera, YouTube links, et cetera, in here to make it even more engaging, and uh, creating quizzes very easily to not only keep it interactive and engaging for the users, but also to give you, as the instructor, uh, valuable feedback on what people are learning and what they aren't to uh, help you improve the next uh, version of the presentation. So that's the, that's the presentation that we had for you, and uh, we promised we'd have time for questions. So, so this is it, and uh, Gary is standing by to help moderate the flow of questions. So if you haven't had a chance to uh, send your questions in, this is a great time to do it. Uh, I'll keep this additional resources link up here. Uh, this is a link to Haikudex website, and you can create your own account and uh, create your first awesome Haikudex very easily and quickly. Uh, previous webinars are already over here, and this webinar will be here at this link by tomorrow. You'll also get a link uh, or an email containing this information and this link. Anyone who wants to sign up for a demo, uh, we have demos um, every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, and the link is here. Or if you want to start your free trial, uh, that's over here. And if you want to take the course that I just looked at, uh, you'll have this link in your uh, email as well, and you can take the course and the quiz as a regular user would. All right, Gary. Okay, thanks. Um, so first of all, I just want to reiterate that uh, we're going to follow up by email uh, by the end of the day tomorrow with a link to the recording of the webinar um, for those of you that were uh, interested in seeing it again. So we've got a lot of good questions. Um, first of all, um, Catherine, there's a couple of questions about the aspect ratio um, that you're working with and that Haiku Deck supports. Um, so someone was asking Great. about is, is it 4 by 3, is it 16 by 9, et cetera. Yeah, it is 4 by 3. Um, because we, we actually were born as an iPad app, so um, I think on our website, there, I, can, I can look, there are some resources about how to deal with 16 by 9, and that's something we'd love to add into the app, it just hasn't, it's not um, fully integrated yet, but we do 4 by 3. Okay, great. Uh, another question for you, Catherine, is um, they're asking if, um, Haiku Deck allows you to set a color palette for your presentation. Hmm, that's a feature, that's a feature that we're working with, we're working on right now. So um, within a couple of months, you'll see more functionality around that. But what I what I often do is um, if I'm let's say that I'm um, my brand I'm a company and my brand colors are blue and yellow. Um, what I will often do is I sort of showed you where the colored backgrounds are. Um, I might intersperse those to really solidify those colors. And also when I'm looking for images, I will look for images that ha incorporate those colors. Sometimes they even search for things like blue and yellow to get some really cool abstract backgrounds that I can use. Um, so I've been able to create some very cohesive, nice, um, imagery that using using some creative methods, but we will be adding the ability for you to really select your particular colors that you want to use. Okay, great. The um, next question is also for you, Catherine. It says, I create my decks on my iPad, then export to PowerPoint so that I can put my company's branding on it. Is there a way to mm -hmm. put the logo the slide in Haiku Deck and not have it take up the whole screen? This is great. This is also a feature that we're building right now. So 
the workaround that I recommend right now is that I, I did for one of the slides in this presentation is I actually just created a slide using Keynote or PowerPoint, a white background slide. I put the logo or logos on there and then I take a screenshot of it and pull it right into Haiku Deck. So we'll make that easier again because I know it's a very common common situation, but I do that pretty frequently. Okay, and we've got a couple of people wondering about the cost of Haiku Deck. Well, it's free. Um, it's a free app for iPad and free on the web. So if you are using the iPad version, there are some opportunities for in-app purchase. So one thing I didn't, I'm just thinking I didn't show you was you can choose different themes for your presentation, which is really a font choice and a kind of color palette for the charts. I showed you a couple of examples of charts. They're very simplified. So um, it includes six free themes, but you can also buy additional themes or fonts on the iPad for $1.99 each. And also on the iPad, we have an arrangement, a partnership with Getty Images. So if you do use stock photography, you can do in-app licensing for Getty Images for also $1.99 per image, which is pretty um, pretty great pricing for anybody who does use um, stock photography. But you can also just you could turn that off and only see the Creative Commons images if you prefer. Okay, now we've got a couple of um, MindFlash product-related questions. The first one is they're wondering if the the slides can be sorted once they're in MindFlash. Yeah, the uh, slides would be sorted directly in PowerPoint, uh, not in MindFlash. So I typically, and I'll just show my screen again here, uh, I typically just use the slide sorter function. And here's the deck that we just used today. And I typically just use the slide sorter function here to rearrange my content and then import it into MindFlash. Now, once it is in MindFlash, you can um, you can hide certain slides, so you can see certain slides that I've hidden uh, for um, for the deck here. So this one is a hidden slide, for instance. Um, this one is a hidden slide. So you can do things like that, and you can also insert quizzes or little PowerPoint files or other assets that you may have. Uh, but the primary uh, sorting and things like that are usually done in PowerPoint itself. The next question is asking if you can force the time spent per slide. Uh, we don't have a feature to force the slide and it uh, force the time uh, in a slide. And that's primarily because our philosophy is that this is self-paced learning. And so the most critical thing is that the person gets the information and absorbs the information. Uh, some people may need more time. Some people may need less time. So we don't force uh, time per slide. We do give you data on how long people have spent in a slide in, uh, on aggregate. So you can see a 25 slide deck and you can see on average how much time do people spend on each slide. You can also see at a per person basis how much time they spent in a course. But the thing we try to emphasize the most is the results, which is uh, typically your quiz scores as a way to assess whether the information was absorbed or not. The next question is asking, once you have the slides in MindFlash, can you export them as a SCORM file? No. Um, we don't export uh, PowerPoint files as uh, SCORM files. We do uh, allow the import of PowerPoint and SCORM files. So you can certainly bring in SCORM files if they're created in two of the most popular packages, Adobe Captivate and Articulate Storyline. And uh, as you can see here, uh, MindFlash is not a course authoring tool. It's really a distribution and tracking tool. So we leave the authoring to uh, guys who do it better, uh, like uh, Haiku Deck, PowerPoint, and uh, some of the leading SCORM authoring tools. The next question is asking if MindFlash is ever planning to allow VoiceOver to be uploaded as a polished audio file. Absolutely. So we already support that. Um, you have uh, two options. You have the option I showed you here. Uh, which is to just uh, record the audio in MindFlash itself. And um, the other option is you have it in PowerPoint and you could be on 
uh, any of these pages and just insert your audio file, uh, which is usually what a lot of people do, especially if you want really high quality audio and you want to use um, audio specific tools to reduce background noise or to level out the audio and things like that, then uh, definitely you can do that and just uh, upload your, attach your audio file to each slide and then upload the whole package to MindFlash. Um, we'll also send a link to a bunch of example courses that were created solely in PowerPoint, which include audio and animation and things like that. So you can get a sense of what uh, fully formed PowerPoint file could uh, will look like as a finished course. And those files have the audio that was attached in PowerPoint. And then also for MindFlash, what um, types of reports are available? So we have uh, tons of reports. And actually, reporting and analytics is the number two most requested feature for anyone looking at an e-learning system. And MindFlash, uh, the number one feature, in case you're wondering, is ease of use. And that's by about 67% of people. And about 46% of people say reporting and analytics is very important to them. And on both fronts, ease of use and reporting and analytics, we have very, very strong feature set. And uh, if you sh either do your own trial or uh, come for one of our weekly demos, you'll see um, fully formed reports based on people, lots of people taking courses and stuff. So uh, we have very strong reporting. Um, welcome to try it out yourself or to come for one of our demos. The uh, next question is for Catherine. Um, does Haiku Dex support Android? Oh, that's a that's a common request. Um, we do not have an Android specific app yet. We're a tiny team. We have about ten people here in Seattle, so we always have to, you know, we we want to be sure we can really deliver well on the platforms we're already using before we add new ones. But um, you can use it in any browser, which makes it at least available to people who don't have an iPad. And it's something that we're thinking about. So if you visit the Haiku Deck site, on the, on the home page, there's actually a place where you can request a new platform. And definitely love to, for you to add your vote. That will help, <laughs> help us prioritize. The next question is asking, um, is a Haiku Deck question as well. And they're asking if they're creating a presentation with proprietary corporate information, is Haiku Deck secured by certificates? Sure. Um, so you, we do run um, on HTTPS. So we've, we've actually spent a lot of effort on backend security this summer in particular. And you can also set the privacy of any deck you create to either public, restricted, meaning only people with the link can get to it, or private. So you do have some controls. I certainly understand that a lot of the information you're sharing might be, might be proprietary. Um, so I do a mix depending on my purposes. Sometimes I'm making my deck public because I really want to get the word out and share the idea that I'm spreading and others. I would choose to keep private or secure because um, we're you know, talking about product plans or things like that. Yeah, so I just have up on the screen what uh, Catherine was talking about, the, the ability to set the privacy oh, levels you. here. Uh, typically yeah. what I do with uh, training related content, which is uh, proprietary and uh, I don't necessarily want to make that public, I set it to private so only I can view the deck and I must be signed in. And then I export this. Mm -hmm. and import it into MindFlash and then uh, invite just the people that I want to take the course. Great. Thanks for showing that. OK, and that does it for the uh, question today. OK, great. Well, um, Catherine, thanks to you and your team for creating an awesome product. Uh, we here at MindFlash enjoy using it. It certainly makes our lives a lot easier by bringing together uh, awesome looking uh, content and uh, forcing us to uh, conform to some of the, the best practices, a few words on a slide, and things like that. So congratulations Great. to you and your team. And thanks for Thank participating you. with us. Um, this thanks is definitely for inviting me. More, yeah, absolutely. It's been one of our more popular webinars. And um, to emphasize again, we will be sending out a link with or an email that contains links to all the resources we talked about, including Haiku Deck, 
uh, posting this webinar as well as past webinars and links to sign up for a free mind flash trial as well as uh, to a weekly product demo that we do every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. So thank you everyone for coming here today and uh, we look forward to seeing you at MindFlash. If you would like a personal demo of MindFlash, uh, you can just put that in the comments as well and we will reach out to you just in case you didn't uh, have a chance to mention that on your registration form. You can do that in the comments and uh, we will have someone reach out to you. So thanks for joining us today and uh, you can be on your way making awesome PowerPoint uh, presentations and training material easily with HaikuDeck and MindFlash. Have a good day, everyone.